Hello, my name is Zach Tomey. I'm the middle school and high school athletic director here at Ithaca. And the point of this video is for parents and guardians and students who missed the co-curricular code. So we're going to go over what you missed last night. First thing, uh, there's three different forms you need to get turned in. The first one, it's usually going to be green like this. It's for your physical. So if your student athlete needs a physical, you get this filled out. The only page we need is the third page that says clearance on the back. The first two pages of this are for your physician, so get that filled out. Your athlete needs to have this before they are allowed to participate in sports. Next thing, if your athlete was able to get a physical the year before, there's a half sheet alternate year card that needs to get filled out. So both of these two, alternate year or physical, need to be in before they're allowed to participate. Second thing, it's ABCs of concussion, um, and same thing. The first page front and back is all information. We don't need that, so you can tear it off, fill out the concussion sheet. It's self-explanatory. Those things, these, those things also need to be turned in. And then the last thing, which is what the bulk of this video will be about, is the 701 Ithaca Middle School High School Extracurricular Code, and it just goes through all of the rules that we have here to stay eligible and things that your athletes and students need to follow. So with that in mind, we'll get going. <clears throat> the philosophy statement. The Ithaca School District and Community view our extracurricular program as an important and integral part of educational program. The students participating in extracurricular activities are involved in experiences that enrich their lives and education. These experiences will build skills and evoke emotions that will be remembered for the rest of their lives. This extracurricular code is in effect for all students involved in our programs, including such peripheral positions as managers, cheerleaders, statisticians, set builders, etc. Students who participate in the school's extracurricular programs are expected to conduct themselves in a positive manner that will bring credit to themselves, their school, and community. The intent of this extracurricular policy is to provide you and your parents or guardians with a reference to your responsibilities and the district's expectations for you in participation in all extracurricular programs. Participants must display high standards of social behavior, display good sportsmanship, display proper respect for coaches, advisors, and teammates, and display a strong desire to do one's best. Ithaca Schools has equal education opportunities and non-discrimination. It is the policy of the Ithaca School District that no person may be denied admission to any public school in the district or be denied participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be discriminated against in any curricular, extracurricular, public service, recreational, or other program or activity because of the person's sex, color, race, religion, national origin, ancestry, creed, pregnancy, marital or parental status, sexual gender or orientation, or physical, mental, emotional, or learning disability as required by section 118.13 of the state statutes. The policy also prohibits discrimination as defined by Title IX of the Educational Amendments of 1972 and also the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The district shall provide appropriate educational services and programs for students who have been identified as having a handicap or disability, regardless of the nature or severity of the handicap or disability. The district shall also provide the reasonable accommodation of the students religious beliefs with regard to examinations and other academic requirements. The district encourages a formal resolution of all complaints under this policy. A formal complaint procedure is available, however, to address allegations of policy violations in the district. If there are any questions regarding Title IX, Section 504, Title II, and 118, you should direct all those to Ms. Julie Crowdy, the district superintendent. Adam, if you are in the building, could you report to Shelley Coomer's office, please? Could you come down to Shelley Coomer's office? Thank you. Next section will be the expectations for all athletes and anybody involved in extracurriculars here at Ithaca. First one, you need to sign and follow the extracurricular code. Number two, follow all directives of the coach or advisor. Number three, treat opposing coaches, participants, and fans with respect and shake hands following each contest. Four, respect the judgment of contest officials, abide by the rules of the contest and display no behavior that could incite fans. Five, cooperate with officials, coaches, and fellow participants. Six, accept the responsibility and privilege of representing your school community and yourself. Display positive public action at all times. 
Seven, live up to the high standards of sportsmanship and proper conduct established by your coach or advisor. Eight, if placed on detention, the student is required to fulfill the detention obligation before the activity obligation. After serving detention, the student may report to his or her scheduled activity. If the student is serving a school suspension, he or she will not be allowed to attend the scheduled event. Nine, academics are the priority. If the student athlete is unable to participate in the daily academic, such as physical education, then the athlete is unable to participate in the extracurricular event. Now, this person policy. The student will also be governed by the Ithaca Middle and High School Parent Handbook Rules and Regulations, the WIAA Regulations, and the Civil and Criminal Laws of the Community, Country, and State. Reporting Infraction. Violations of extracurricular codes will be reported to the principal or athletic director. Reported violations of the code will be signed, a written statement, or photos or videos which are published or posted. Violations Process. The principal or athletic director will interview the accused student upon receiving the written violation report and explain his or her due process. Within five school days, the investigation will be completed and a determination will be made to whether or not a violation occurred. Some revocation violations will be acted on within the first five school days. If the student admits to the violation, he or she will submit to the code violation consequences as written in the code. If the student denies the alleged violation in this report, he or she will present a written denial and an appeal to the investigator. All support for the denial will be in writing with signatures. No unsigned letters or statements will be accepted. The meeting will be held in the administrator's offices with the principal, and the other proceedings shall be tape recorded. The principal will determine if the conduct occurred and if so, whether the consequences imposed is consistent with the extracurricular code. Parents or guardians may accompany the student to the principal's meeting, the students, coaches, and advisors may also be present. If the parents and the student are not satisfied with the principal's determination, they may request that the school board review the principal's determination. The request must be made to the principal or the district administrator. The school board will review the tape recording and all documentation at the next regularly scheduled board meeting. The school board shall make a determination whether or not sufficient reason existed for the principal's determination. Neither the principal nor the student or parent will be present at the school board meeting. Statement of participation. As determined by the WIA, participation in school extracurricular activities is a privilege, not a right. The coach and administrator shall determine what students will play, who will start, and how long each will play in any given contest. Athletes who participate in interscholastic high school athletics are not guaranteed any amount of playing time. Equipment and practice. Participants will not be allowed to practice or draw equipment until their extracurricular guidelines, participant acknowledgement slip, WIA physical examination card, and medical consent cards are signed and returned to the athletic director, coach, or advisor. Medical consent cards will be kept on file and a copy given to the coaches and advisors. Delinquent accounts. Students who have delinquent accounts for fees or equipment to other curricular activities shall not be allowed to participate in events or graduation ceremonies until those accounts are settled. Coaches advisors shall notify the athletic director of any delinquent accounts and the athletic director will notify the student and the guardian. Once accounts are all settled, the coach or advisor will notify the athletic director that the accounts have been satisfied. Communication. Parents and the students will communicate with the coach and advisor if an issue has not been resolved, then the participants may communicate with the athletic director. Concussion procedures. In the event that your son or daughter has been treated for a concussion, has concussion symptoms, the following steps will be necessary for them to return back to participating in an athletic program. First, be cleared by a medical professional that has been certified to treat pediatric concussions and concussion systems. Symptoms, this is typically done through a letter given to the school, written by the physician. Two, the letter clearing the student to play will be addressed to the athletic director and that it will be forwarded on to the necessary coaching staff. The athletic director will follow up the medical professional to ensure that they have proper qualifications to be clearing an athlete for competition. And three, copies of the return to competition letter will be placed in the student's cumulative school file for record keeping. It is our hope to keep our students safe and healthy throughout the school year and by following these simple steps we believe that we can better serve the students at Ithaca community. Cross-reference with the WIA recommendations and if you'll have this sheet, there's a link that you can go to for more information. 
No athlete shall return to play or practice on the same day of the concussion. Any athlete suspected of having a concussion shall be evaluated by an appropriate health care person. Any athlete with a concussion shall be medically cleared by the appropriate health care professional prior to resuming participation in any practice or competition. After medical clearance, return to play shall follow a stepwise protocol of provisions for delayed return to play based upon return of any symptoms or signs. Physicals. Athletes are required to have a physical every two years. The Ithaca School District recommends that you have physicals in the summer of your 6th, 8th, 10th, and 12th grade years. Physical cards and alternate year cards, athletic guideline agreements, and notification of risk injury can be picked up and returned to the athletic director or schools. Again, physicals are green, athletic, um, alternate year cards with half white sheets. Transportation. Participants must go to away events that the school provides transportation for. Exceptions may only be granted by the principal based on a written request submitted 24 hours prior to the event. Participants must return to Ithaca schools in the same vehicle they traveled to the contest or scrimmage unless excused ahead of time by the coach after personally receiving a signed note from the parent. If a parent requests that the participant returns from the contest with another parent, a signed note from that parent must be approved by the principal and coach 24 hours before the contest. If a parent would like to transport their participant home from a contest, the principal and or coach must receive a signed written request in advance and provide a release at the end of the contest after a face-to-face -face meeting. Not following transportation guidelines could result in a denial for future requests. Next section, violation of extracurricular activity guidelines, extracurricular chart. For the purpose of establishing standards to apply to many extracurricular activities offered at Ithaca Area Schools, two categories of participation are defined. Any penalty imposed must be served in all categories of participation that the student is involved in during the suspension period. The following guidelines apply 12 months a year. Any suspensions not fulfilled during the current season will be completed during the next season. And you can look when you look at this page of category one is for athletics. Category two is anything your student is involved in that's not a sport. Category one penalties for athletics. For violation of extracurricular guideline agreement, this area includes all interscholastic athletic activities and other activities directly related to athletics where involvement normally occurs outside the regular school day but may also apply to summer vacation. These violations will carry over starting from the sixth grade through the twelfth grade. Students transitioning from middle school to high school will start grade nine with a clear record. Category two penalties for violation of extracurricular guideline agreement. This area includes all school clubs and activities that are not athletic. Students transitioning from middle school to high school will start ninth grade with a clear record. The one exception to the clear record is if it's a alcohol or drug related suspension. Attendance categories one and two. Participants must be in attendance by 11 a.m. on the day before, the day of, and the day after a practice or extracurricular activity. Any absence during this time must be excused per school attendance policy in order to participate. If a participant is absent the day before, day of, or day following a contest or performance, the student may not participate in the next contest or performance unless excused per attendance policy. Excuse absences are granted for personal illness, family illness, family emergencies, personal appointments with a professional, funerals, death in the family, religious holidays, court appearances, family trips, special events of educational value, approved school activities, and special circumstances for a good cause approved in advance by an attendance officer. Rules of conduct category one and two, athletic, non-athletic, six to twelve. At all times, participants shall refrain from conduct that violates the ideas, principles, and standards of Ithaca area schools. Participants that violate these exceptions may lose eligibility. Ethical and behavioral issues include but are not limited to negative and or legal acts against persons or property, involvement in acts that are viewed contrary to the accepted moral and legal standards, including severe profanity, harassment, abusive language, vandalism, fighting, cheating at tests or schoolwork, theft, or any other acts that are unbecoming of a participant. Penalties. A student who reportedly or willfully demonstrates behavior which shows disregard to school rules and regulations such as an insubordination to school personnel shall be ineligible for a minimum of one contest. Any student who received a discipline referral from a teacher or administrator may be suspended for one or more contests. A student involved in an act such as harassment, vandalism, fighting, cheating, theft, or any other acts 
may be suspended from participation. Any student whose behavior warrants a school suspension will be a code suspended for the day. The number of suspended events and contest performances will be corresponded with the number of days of the school suspension. Alcohol and other drug attendance at unacceptable gatherings. Grade 6, 12, Category 1, Athletic. Participants using under the influence of alcohol or other drugs are charged with an attendance at an unacceptable gathering which is not chaperoned by a parent with alcohol, tobacco, vaping, or other controlled substances are present and are being consumed shall be held accountable as follows. Your first violation, the student shall be suspended from playing in a game or contest for a minimum period of 33% of the season. If the student in question uses, possesses, buys, sells any drugs, alcohol, tobacco products at this time, should the participant turn themselves into the principal or athletic director, the initial violation will be reduced to 25% of the season. You can only do this for your first time offense. Second violation, the student shall be suspended from playing in a game or contest for a minimum period of 100% of the season if the student uses, buys, sells any drugs, alcohol, tobacco of any kind. Third violation, you have a calendar year suspension, 12 months from the date of the penalty, and forfeiture of all awards, honors, and activities involved in at the time of the violation. Referral to an approved non-school assessment program at the student's expense is mandatory, and completion of the program is required for further participation. Fourth violation, loss of eligibility in all extracurricular participation for the remainder of the student's high school enrollment, and forfeiture of all awards and honors for activities involved in at the time of the violation. If still under suspension at the start of the state playoffs, the student will be ineligible to participate. The season will be considered to be the regular season scheduled contest. Percentage of suspension based on games will carry over to the season of the next sport played. The coach or athletic extracurricular activities shall verify that the signed copy of participation agreement is on file, and if not, the student shall not participate until the signed copy is submitted. I'll call another drug drugs, attendance at unacceptable gatherings, category two, non-athletic. Participants using alcohol and other drugs under the influence of or charged with the attendance at an unacceptable gathering, which is not chaperoned by a parent with alcohol, tobacco, vaping, or controlled substances are present and being consumed and shall be held accountable as follows. First violation, the students shall be suspended from participation for the next two category two scheduled events or contest or performances should the participant turn themselves in to the principal or athletic director, it will be reduced to one contest. Self-reporting is only for the first violation. Second violation, the student shall be suspended from participating in the next three category two events, contest, performances. Third violation, it's a calendar year suspension, 12 months from the date of penalty and forfeiture of all awards and honors at the time of the violation. Assessment program will be mandatory. Completion of said program at the student's expense is required to be eligible for further participation. Fourth violation, loss of eligibility in all extracurricular activities for the remainder of the student's high school enrollment, forfeiture of all awards and honors for activities involved in at the time of the violation. The advisor for non-athletic extracurricular activities shall verify that a signed copy of the participation agreement is on file, and if not, the student shall not participate until the signed copy is submitted. Academics, categories 1 and 2, athletic, non-athletic, grades 6, 12. To be eligible to participate in extracurricular activity, a student must be enrolled in at least seven credits or approved academic programming during a minimum grade point average of 1.75 with no failing F grades at the end of the nine-week grading period. And eligibility shall be for 21 calendar days with a minimum of 15 school days and a minimum of three games, meets, or matches whichever is lesser for fall sports. Ineligible students shall secure a grade request sheet from either the school principal or school counselor. Grade requests shall be made of each of the student's teachers minimum three days prior to his or her reinstatement and submitted to the principal or counselor no later than one day prior to seeking reinstatement in any given sport. Reinstatement will be re reviewed four and a half weeks and nine and a half weeks only. During the period of academic ineligibility, the student must participate in team practices and attend games and meets and matches as directed by the coach or advisor. For academic reasons, student may take summer courses, but this will not reduce the status of ineligibility. <coughs> Excessive violation. Except as here and above covered, the extracurricular member 
whether or not juvenile who has been charged or could be charged with committing a crime or what could be a crime if the student were not a juvenile. Examples covered include, but are not limited to, vandalism, breaking and entering, stealing, assault, attempted assault, i.e. striking a staff member, possession of a weapon, otherwise endanger the safety of others, shall be held accountable as follows. Student extracurricular participants will be immediately suspended from participation, activities, contests, and practice until the appeals process has established the student's innocence. If guilty is determined to be prohibited acts, the student shall be suspended from one calendar year from the date of the infraction, regardless of the findings of civil authorities, if the school authorities find that the student in question has committed a prohibited acts, as prescribed above, the student shall be suspended participation for one calendar year from the date of the infraction. And again, that's our athletic extracurricular code. On the back page is the form that needs to be filled out by the parents or guardians and returned. The first eight pages, again, are just what I read through, so it's added information. All of these forms can be found on the Ithaca School page. If you ever need them, you can print them out at home and get all these things turned in so your athlete or son or daughter who's in an extracurricular can participate. Thank you.